All right, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you guys for joining us. You know, every time I do this, I think I'm gonna look and see what week we're on. So I believe we're on week four of College Rodeo 101. Um, today, we have a guest from a uh, rodeo coach from Southeastern Oklahoma State University, Miss Christy Broderick. Um, I'm super excited. This will be, I know there are more women rodeo coaches than just the two that I have interviewed. So I'm super excited. It's always good to be able to talk to um, another woman in the industry, which um, I hate to go that route, but I think this industry uh, is one of the industries and maybe few that as a woman, you can get to the top just as easily as any other man. And so I'm, I'm always real proud to be a part of the Western industry and rodeo industry as a whole because of that. So I don't want to spend a lot of time on that, but I, I like to talk about it because it, it's important. Um, so side note, two things that I have noticed. Um, I have not done my hair since the very first interview. Sorry about that. I accidentally watched the first one today and my hair looked real nice. Unfortunately, it's way grown out and it's not gonna look that nice for a long time. Um, and two, I moved all of my notes from this side of my computer to this side of my computer because I have a shiner. And listen, my husband did not hit me, do not freak out. I actually, self-deprecating here. I threw some Tupperware in the top storage above my fridge and it bounced back and gave me a black eye. So. These are not things that you can make up. I cannot make this kind of stuff up. So I wanted everybody to know that's why I have a black eye. <laughs> I forgot about it on Monday. So I'm glad that nobody said anything. So let's start this broadcast with some good stuff and not me telling stories as usual. Um, so Christy, let's talk about your school. Can you tell me where you are located? Yes, I'm located in Southeastern Oklahoma, um, about 15 minutes from the Texas line. It's about 98 to 100 miles north of uh, Dallas-Fort Worth area and approximately probably about 150 miles south of Oklahoma City um, is where our location is. Okay, can you talk to us a little bit about the community, like the, uh, the size of the community and kind of what, what we can expect as students there? Right, um, Durant, the city of Durant, the population is approximately probably around 17,000. Um, the county probably has closer to about 45,000 people, which means it's a really a rural area. Um, we're surrounded by a lot of farmland um, and farms in this area. So it is rural southeastern Oklahoma. Um, but you can get very quickly to a large city just by crossing the Red River. So uh, it's really great uh, location for things to do. Plus, honestly, just to live, uh, if you, if you'd rather live out, you know, in a country atmosphere. So are you from that area originally? Uh, originally I'm from, uh, Northeast Oklahoma. Um, I actually went to school here years ago. My husband is from here. So we, uh, we relocated back to his hometown from mine about 12 or 13 years ago. Great, great. Um, so can you talk to me a little bit about what some academic choices might be or what, what you experience your student athletes kind of going through, what programs they're going through right now? Right, I think our largest program here, I uh, have the most interest in from students that graduate uh, is occupational and safety health uh, program. Uh, it's a program that actually puts you into an internship position and um, job placement and it pays fairly well on top of that. Um, probably it's the largest career program here on campus. I think they want to say seven to 800 kids are in that program out of our population of about 40, 4,800. So that's a, that's a large program in itself. Um, this, this school originated as a teaching college. So of course the uh, department you know, of education is, is uh, a pretty large department here as well. We also have an aviation program. I've had a couple of students graduate in that. Um, and that's very popular. We get a lot of out-of-state interest in that program uh, as well. So I, I think the School of Business um, is another program I have several kids in. It's accredited with OU and OSU, Division I schools. So 
that's a huge uh, program here and it's funded very well. Um, and we have a lot of success in that as well. Great, so I know we've had one gal in particular that has tuned into all of our lives. So um, I don't see her on, but I know that the question is coming. Do y'all have an environmental studies program? Not to my knowledge, um, specifically that. Okay. Um, I know we don't. Uh, we, we have a lot of pre-medical uh, programs. We don't mm -hmm. specifically have medical programs here, but I know a lot of students leave here and get into those programs. So I feel like that that has a pretty high success rate as well. Okay, okay, great. Um, so something that we've talked about with every, uh, every rodeo program and every college is there's a lot of different requirements for incoming freshmen uh, as far as living. Uh, and where they can live, where they can house. So can you talk about what those requirements are and then talk about some of the other options off campus, on campus uh, for living? And then also one that we've not talked about very often, but uh, maybe for uh, meal plans for students? Right, we, first year freshmen um, here are required to live in the dorm unless they live within a, a 60 mile radius of the campus. Uh, mm -hmm. And in saying that, there's two options here of different price of dorms. Um, we have the uh, the more expensive dorms that, of course, look more like an apartment. Mm -hmm. And then we have the old traditional dorms where there's basically two beds without the kitchen. Um, and so it just depends on what they want to pay. Um, sometimes we do have dorm waivers available, you know, for some of our scholarship students. Uh, the meal plan is pretty much set in either dorm, so there's not much option there. There is a little more option with the uh, Shearer Hall, which are the uh, dorms that look more like an apartment. You can choose the lesser uh, meal plan in those because the cost is higher. Uh, it just really depends on what you wanna spend and how many meals a day you think you're gonna eat. You can always load money back on that, so mm -hmm. if you're, you're never gonna run out of meals. Um, and some students would rather do that. That way, if they don't use what they pre-choose, then mm -hmm. they're not out money. And right. um, I've had students do that as well. Perfect. Um, so something that um, actually Mr. Butch Bratsky uh, commented when he saw that you were going to be joining me and something that we talked about prior to this is the... Um, the fundraiser for the Nothing But Try scholarships. That was a few a, a few couple weeks ago. Um, can you talk to me a little bit about that? How did it go? Um, how was the turnout and how much money did y'all raise? Right. Um, yeah. And just, I'll explain a little bit. I'm, I'm actually on the NIRA alumni board. Um, okay. and they, what they do is they basically as a board, they fundraise and reach out to people for scholarships that are awarded uh, during the CNFR. And then actually the nothing but try is through the NRA association. Mm -hmm. um, and Susan Canole is actually over those, but she had reached out to me, uh, Sean Mulligan and, and her have been putting on a, uh, this nothing but try steer wrestling for I think seven years uh, in Le Levi Wise's, Wiseness in his name. Um, and all the proceeds were going to those four nothing but try uh, scholarships or his specifically. And so because breakaways gotten so popular, um, it made sense to add a breakaway this year, especially with not as many events to be able to go to. Um, and of course, that was in Betty Gill Cooper Ratliff's name, um, who happened to be my coach years ago here at Southeastern. So she reached out to me to see if I, I would mind, you know, help um, kind of corral that because I am local. Um, just to get it off the ground, see how it went. Um, that event did well uh, because you, we combined the steer wrestling and breakaway in one day, and then we had a cornhole tournament, and it, it was really a lot of fun. It lasted all day and all night, um, and people came just to get in the cornhole tournament, which I'm going to be honest, I've never been to, and they're serious mm -hmm. about cornhole. Um, yeah, you know, there's no messing was, around. No, it's no messing around. They go out to their car and get their own specific, you know, <laughs> bags to use and I'm like oh my gosh this is another world um so that event was a lot of fun um and it did well and and they were able to go ahead and award the scholarships this year which was great so that even though we didn't have a CNFR those nothing but try scholarships got awarded um and then and then referring back to the NRA alumni um 
each year, the goal, it started with $25,000 goal. It, we, you know, bumped it to 30. Now it's bumped up to 35,000 and all that money goes to each year, the go around winners at the CNFR, the team winners, you know, uh, the rookies, things like that. So it's just something as a board that we felt is most important to be able to do that for the association. Well, and so we've talked on here a, a couple of times, kind of the, some of the glaring differences between college rodeo and NCAA sports. Uh, number one, I would say is that you can be competing in college rodeo and compete professionally, but also the fact that when you compete, you win scholarship money. And um, obviously that's a big difference. I mean, you're not, you're not going to NCAA, you're not winning scholarship money when you win basketball games or football games, but right. um, in effect, uh, I don't know, it's just, it's just a little bit different community. So I think that's awesome that the alumni can come together like that. Um, I would also add from my experience uh, doing the production at the CNFR, um, this is going to be, now, are y'all still having your reunion during that week in June or have y'all canceled that too? No, that's been canceled as well. We're going to be doing exactly what we're doing uh, yep. as a team and, um, and try to just plan for next year as things are mm -hmm. going to move forward um, the best we can at this point. The main goal, again, will be to, you know, we, we, weren't, we did not use the monies we've raised this year. So, of course, it's going to be bumped up. So next year, that will be to the students' benefits. They're going to probably, can, you know, get, get more scholarship money than they would have normally. So that'll yeah. be it. So it's an interesting twist because I think a lot of um, organizations may see a deficit from the cancellations of events. But in this case, um, I mean, it almost allows the Alumni Association to kind of uh, have a safety net, so to speak, or, or like you mentioned, going to increase the dollar amount of those scholarships for 2021. Right. And I'm sure that will be the topic of conversation, what, what to do, because mm -hmm. this is the first time anyone's dealt with missing the CNFR ever. So right whole different scenario moving forward for next year for sure so we t i totally derailed us there for a little bit away from your program but i appreciate oh, you answering fine. those questions too yeah that's fine um yeah it, it it's both sides are important association is as important as the alumni association it goes hand in hand and no matter what the kids benefit from all the scholarships and that's really to me what college rodeo is about yeah, for sure. So, I mean, I, I think so, so many times kids um, that are able to get a rodeo scholarship maybe would not have um, even sought out a higher education at all. And so this kind of opens some other doors that maybe wouldn't be available for them. Right. I agree totally with that. I think it gives them an incentive um, to go to school. Mm -hmm. And then ironically, when you get a lot of kids in a, in a college setting, they actually like it. I've heard some of mine say it more than they did high school. It's not every day, all day. And uh, so if you can, if you can get someone here on a rodeo scholarship and that entices them to go to school and get the degree, to me, that's a great thing. Yeah, definitely a win. Um, so let's talk a little bit more specifically, Christy, about your program. Um, I guess, can you give us a little bit of history and then maybe talk about uh, facilities, boarding horses, and um, kind of what a day in the life of practice looks like for you guys? Sure. Um, this program has been around since the 1950s. It started out as a club. It's called the Little D Rodeo Club that evolved into the Southeastern Rodeo Team in the 19, early 1970s. Um, the, the past history of the school in the 70s and early 80s, the school had unbelievable success. Um, I think there were five national championships in a row back in the day and uh, had some great people that went through here, a lot of Hall of Fame type people. Um, and so it has a rich history of winning. Uh, and then as it proceeded on through the 80s and 90s and 2000s, um, it, it just, it you know, it has still won. Um, I think to date the school has nine national championships. And uh, so it, it's done well. I was fortunate to get to be here in the 90s, mid 90s and be on a great team. Um, and so it was really awesome for me just to get to come back and do this. I, I've actually been a public school teacher for 15 years. I coached all girls sports. Uh, and so, you know, I totally took a different career path in life uh, mm -hmm. and 
and, and said, Hey, I want to go back to my program. I felt like it was, it was something I really wanted to do at that time in my life. So, um, I've been here, this will be my eighth year and, uh, I've had a great time and it's just really awesome getting to come back here, uh, and work where honestly, this school gave me a lot and I feel like I'm trying to give it back in some way. Uh, and so that, that's kind of where I am in coming back to the program. Um, we've, we've hosted a lot of, uh, the last eight years, we've hosted a lot of alumni events. So we're able to bring them back on campus each year to a hall of fame and an alumni rodeo. And honestly, once the alumni started coming back, it's been a lot of fun hearing all the great mm-hmm. stories from the years past. And, uh, that's honestly the most fun night of the year for me. Uh, but as far as a day in life here with me as the coach, um, I'm really involved hands-on every day at practice as a coach. I like to be in the arena. I like to know what's going on. Um, having a background in coaching basketball, I try to bring that to the arena as much as Mm -hmm. I can, um, with a lot of expectations and, and, you know, I just feel like the hard work you put in will show, uh, and I tried to bring that same mentality to the practice arena. We do, um, on the men's side, do rough stock. I can't do that without the help of my husband, of course, uh, who also has been a football coach and has a past history in coaching in public school. So I, I, we work hand in hand together. Honestly, I can't do this by myself. It's impossible. Um, and so I rely on him a lot for help. Um, but we practice rough stock one night a week on live, you know, bucking horses and bulls. Um, we have machines and then of course we have, um, you know, time to vent cattle that we practice every day. So I, I look forward to that every day. It's the fun part of my day is getting in the arena. Uh, and I teach some classes in the morning. So once I get outside, it's a good time for me. I think that's fun practicing. So that's kind of a day in a life here at Southeastern. So I know, you know, we've talked to, I've talked to a couple different programs Um, that vary as far as how structured um, practices are and kind of how structured programs as a whole. I mean, it can range anywhere from, you know, come and go practice when you want, or um, we're going to start at this time in the morning. We're going to work out as a team. You're going to go to your class. You're going to come back when you, you know, in between classes, you know, kind of where do you guys fall uh, in structure? I feel like I'm probably very structured. um, And I think it's due to my past as a teacher Mm -hmm. and being on a schedule and, and coaching sports in public school and being, and having to be very structured. Um, and I feel like that's, that's how I run, run practices. Um, I think for me, I have to be organized and have a schedule. So we stay on task of what we're doing. Um, and, and often kids do go to jackpots. Don't get me wrong. There are some practices they miss. I'm fine with that. If they're competing, you know, and doing something in that area, Mm -hmm. or if they have schoolwork, of course, I'm fine with them missing practice for other things. That's really what it's all about. So, um, I feel like I'm more of a structured hands-on, um, very involved coach. I try to be. Yeah. So, um, I'm just going to reiterate, I think we've talked about this a couple of times, but one of the important things about uh, student athletes when they're looking for um, a home, a new home, a college to attend a program that they, they can kind of be a part of is making sure that the structure and the culture really fits what they're looking for. And I think oftentimes, and especially rang true for me, I didn't really think about that when I was looking for a, where I wanted to go to college. And so I think it's really good that we talk about stuff like that. Um, rodeo and college rodeo in particular, rodeo as, as kind of by nature is an individual sport and kind of a group effort always, no matter what level you're at, there's always kind of that group effort. And so I think when you change from high school level to the college level, you start to morph into like realizing that it doesn't have to be all individual. Like you have this team that can support you and um, how you fit in that culture is so important. So I like to talk about it in these for any recruits that are watching or any parents that are watching that kind of keep that in the back of your mind about what type of culture you're looking for, what type of support your student might need. Um, Cause maybe they're not really thinking about that. Um, but it really is important. I feel like. Right. I agree. And, and, and not everyone is all about the structure type of practice either. And I get that as well. Um, some people want to kind of be on their own, do their own thing Mm -hmm. and that's fine. It's just, it's just depending on what you choose and and what you feel your needs are at that time. Um, 
but I could, I've seen success both ways. So mm -hmm. that's just how it is here with, with us. Um, and that's, that's all I know. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so talk to me about when you're recruiting, well, first, are you still recruiting for this fall season? And then talk to me about what, what do you look for when you are recruiting student athletes for your program? Right. I, I'm going to say I'm always recruiting, even when I'm not officially recruiting, because I'm always looking. Um, I try to go to as many things as I possibly can just to see people and talk to them. Um, of course, I'm looking for someone that is interested first and foremost of getting a degree. To me, if you are just going to school to just college rodeo, that is not making a lot of sense to just me. Because let's get real, you can make more money rodeoing outside of college if that's something you want to do. Um, mm -hmm. Ultimately, in the end, the greatest achievement is to get your degree. And that's really what it should be all about, in my opinion. Um, and, I, and I do see some people, and even through here, that will, will not finish their degree because they go you know, professionally. And of course, they go on to make the NFR and things like that. I understand that as well. And sometimes... I can understand that at, you know, a certain age, you have to do that. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I'm big on getting a degree. I, I really want my kids to graduate. And I think that's important to me, you know, the most. Um, but, I, you know, that that's just my mm -hmm. perspective on things because it worked well for me. Some people will never use that degree till later in life and they'll mm -hmm. be glad they had it, I think at some point. Yeah, absolutely. So um, let's talk a little bit about more specifically scholarships from your program. Do y'all have, um, I assume you have some kids that, you know, some seniors from this year that may, are, do you have any coming back to repeat their senior year? Um, do you have scholarship money available this fall? What does it look like for you guys? Right. I, um, when the CNFR was canceled and then they basically voided or, or gave them another year of eligibility voided the year on on their membership um I think it was the right thing to do so kids could finish uh ultimately I had already replaced those students that I thought would be out of eligibility so I'm going to be honest it put me kind of in a a, a decision making type situation what mm -hmm. I had to do um my school supported this wholeheartedly for me and helped me um where they're all able to come back. And I was very grateful for their support during that time. I know some schools haven't been as fortunate mm -hmm. um, being able to keep all their students if they wanted to. Um, so I have all seven kids that were actually going to graduate or run out of eligibility coming back. And then I've recruited about that many more. So, you know, I'm going to have 14, 15 extra kids possibly you know when school starts um which will put my team kind of over our number usually I try to keep our number under 30 the men's and women's team combined because that's what fits best at our facility um and that's honestly what I can handle uh alone so when that happened I was grateful they got to finish I know it was really important for those seniors to get to finish their year it meant a lot to them to be able to come back and they were all just hoping they would do that and they did um financially scholarship wise it 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 could put you in a bind <laughs> and um but I'm I'm pretty much out of scholarship money for this year due to what happened and uh and that's okay. Every, I mean, it worked out honestly fine for me. Um, and again, I'm still looking onto the next year and the next year, you know, at younger kids. So, and, and transfers from junior colleges. Um, it also gave those kids at junior colleges another year if they wanted to stay there as well. So I think what the decision was made was a great decision. I think it worked in everyone's favor. I know I have a daughter that actually graduated who chose not to come back. And, uh, as of today, she hasn't chosen to come back. She yeah. went ahead and got a job and that was important to her. So not all kids took advantage of what was offered, mm -hmm. you know, for their own personal reasons. So I was just glad they had the opportunity to choose. Yeah, I think that um, I would agree with that. I think that choice 
you know, whether or not to, to take that senior year again, or to use that extra, I don't know, extra year of eligibility again. I, I think that was a good choice too on their part. Cause I know a couple other um, student athletes that aren't going to use it. They're going to stick with their original plan and, and off they go. So, um, but I think it was good for them to give them that option. So, Hey, listen, I appreciate your honesty about that scholarship money. I think that that's kind of where my mind went, uh, assuming that a lot of colleges would be in that same boat. Um, so I appreciate the honesty. I know that it does change the recruitment process this year, or at least the, the scholarship end. And maybe there's a lot of coaches doing some juggling like you did kind of to make it happen. So uh, I'm, I appreciate you sharing it with me right? Well, and everybody else. Um, yeah. <laughs> so um, is there anything else that you want to make sure that people know about your program or anything you want to add? Um, no, I, I, I think I've pretty much summed it up. Um, you know, I just, I have a lot invested in this because I went to school here. So I feel like it means quite a bit to me to, to make it successful here. Um, and I just really appreciate the opportunity to get to work where I went to school. I think it's a great thing for myself, my family. Um, but the location, honestly, I feel like where we're located is ideal to rodeo out of. <laughs> it's, it's rodeo country down here uh, in the heart of Oklahoma and Texoma land, North Texas. So that part of it, I just feel like, and that's what drew me here years ago was honestly the location um, and the success it's had. So. Yeah, perfect. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Um, for everybody that is watching live, thank you guys for watching live. I always feel like a broken record this time of the interview, but um, if you are re-watching, go ahead and post your comments or your questions down below, and Christy or myself will be sure to get back to you. Um, for those that are looking at colleges, um, look back at the live video section and see if there's any colleges that you need information on or you need more information on. Also, if we haven't interviewed a college that you are interested in, just shoot me a message and I'll reach out to them. I know um, after uh, Monday, I there was a, a request for Central Wyoming College in uh, here in Wyoming, so we've got them on the schedule. Um, but just let me know, um, as I mentioned on Monday, we're going to kind of change the format a little bit just because it's starting to get real busy around here um, with the summertime. So we're going to do once a week. Um, it, if it gets super busy like we have been, then I may increase it. But for now, we're going to cut back to once a week. We're going to do that every Monday, uh, Monday at two. So um, we have one more college to interview this week. And I'm not going to lie. I can't remember who it is. I don't have my calendar right here. Clearly, I was not prepared. Um, but I am excited to announce that Monday, June 8th, we're going to actually kind of go a little broader than just college rodeo. And we're going to kind of talk about the state of rodeo, um, professional rodeo, and probably talk a little bit about college as well. But we're going to have uh, Boyd Paul Hamus on uh, the broadcast and, I don't know, just have a little conversation with him. If you guys have any questions that um, you're you want to ask or you want to join us live and ask those questions in, then we would appreciate it. Um, and then following uh, his interview, we'll come back to Wyoming and uh, meet up with Drew Schrock uh, from Central Wyoming College. And that's about all we have on the books right now. So if there's some other colleges, like I mentioned, that you want to talk to, please feel free to message me and we'll, uh, we'll do what we can do to get them on here. Um, thank you so much, Christy. I appreciate your time. Um, thank you guys for tuning in and we will, we'll catch you on Friday. <laughs>